Can I get a yay, yay? Yay, yay! Turn my mic up, up, man. Turn this mic up, baby. Sit my ass Turn this mic up. Turn my mic up, too. You going to do it again? No, I just want my mic up. Hey, man, I know I got up on the right side of the bed. I feel like me and Cube got the same jacket on, Heather. Is that true? Y'all do. That's crazy. Similar. Yeah. I wish we had the same bank account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, May -may? Man, come on now. Let me tell you, for so many reasons, that these three men, you know, these three leaders, these three icons, uh, mean so much to me. Because uh, we're from the same school. I got a chance to watch their growth. I used to work at a, um, what they called a, a one stop called Mu the Music People in North Oakland. <laughs> you remember that? I definitely know about that. Okay. And the Music People used to do what they call consignment deals for independent artists to help you circulate your music around the world. Another place called City. I used to work in the back, and when the Click uh, put out their first project, I was the person that used to monitor how many sales they had, right? And put it on the shelves for when the retailer, the buyers used to come in. And I was the person that used to say, you should get that click. You know, when Life Is came out, was short, you know, and all the music before that came out, Born to Mac, all of these different projects came out. I was the kid in there, same age, but I was the kid in there that was like, man, damn, I can see how this is moving, same with Hammer, right? Uh, yes, sir. When, when NWA first came out, I feel like y'all was with McCola at one point. Yeah, McCola, first started out with McCola. McCola Records. Ruthless did. Ruthless did, right? And any music that came out, I was aware. I, that's how I was picking up the game. I was an artist too, so I was inspired by what they were doing. But nobody knew that. I don't shit. 20, 50, 50, 50, however many years later, <laughs> <laughs> you like the math. I almost tried to do it in the air that they would be here really expanding the boundaries of what this culture can accomplish. We met each and every one of them as an MC, but we know each and every one of them today as a business mogul. Give them a round of applause for that. Got to add Snoop in there too, you know? Snoop, oh, forgive me. Salute to Snoop Dogg, man. Give it up for Snoop as well, the fourth Dog. member of Mount Westmore. And look what Snoop is doing with his career. Snoop is hobnobbing with Marsh, Martha Stewart. I, 187 yeah. on the undercover cop. <laughs> That's a long distance. <laughs> That's a long distance, right? Man. And so for me... It, I mean, got... Martha done did more time than Snoop, so... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Get out, thank Ice you. She should be happy he hanging with her criminal ass. And she, did, and she didn't snitch. <laughs> and she didn't snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Kept it solid, not salad. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yo, and then I can't forget the other icon. I, hey, man, I don't travel without her. Give it up for the one and only Heather B. Yeah, the yeah. First, Heather. The first iconic. Heather. The first African American reality TV star ever. Real World yeah. Season 1. Give it up. That is yeah, yeah. Be eating if it wasn't for Heather. And a dope rapper. Don't think I forgot. Thank you. Yo, bars, yeah. bars. Cuzzle, y'all oh, was in the um, Heather at the time? Yo, Box come on now. We she did was, Soul Train I knew, together. I knew about her. Yeah, we come on. We go back with Soul Train, man. Me and Sugar. We all watch your MTV raps. Me and Sugar TV raps. did it, right? Was, was Sugar yeah, on that yeah, with me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We come all on. watch your MTV raps. All of us. All of us watch it. Wow. Okay, see, Heather told you, man, you got fans too. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's talk, man. Uh, Short and I was having this conversation, Cube, uh, uh, backstage, and Short so eloquently um, talked about why he's excited to be about this, be a part of this project. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what excited you? You have so much on your plate. Why Mount Westmore? What was it about this that this ideal and this concept? Uh, it was just a perfect group, you know. Um... We friends, you know, y'all cousins, but we cousins too. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just we cousins through entertainment and then friendship. And, um, you know, we have genuine love for each other. Never had an argument that didn't um, start with the Raiders or the 49ers or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, love and respect. Uh, always happy to see these dudes coming. We've done... a thousand shows with each other, you know, me and Too Short been touring since the NWA days. I met him in 1988 when he put out Born to Mac, and we was we was uh, opening up for 
Heavy D uh, and the Boys, Salt and Pepper, um, UTFO at the time. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, we gravitated toward each other and it, we've always been friends. And same with 40, you know, I love to see 40 coming, you know what I mean? It just put a smile on my face. And same Snoop here. too, you know, we, like, I know I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a grouch, but for the most part, we the funnest group in hip hop. Yeah, real life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Without a doubt, we having fun right now, and uh, it just, it's just really about, um, you know, doing something cool for the culture. Why not? Like this is our job to be innovative and creative and do new stuff that you don't expect. You know, it's dope because nobody was expecting it, and nobody believed that it would really come together, and. Um, and, you know, Mount Westmore is more than a group. It's, you know, we got a business together. It's an mm-hmm. LLC. We done made a lot of money, you know, before the album even came out. So, you know, we plan to grow this thing, do more albums. We got more albums cocked and loaded. So you're going to see a lot more of us. So it's just it's special, man. It's my third group, um, you know, NWA. As far as, you know, on the professional level, yeah. but I've been in, you know, Stereo Crew and CIA. CIA, and that's yeah. You know. Um, like round of applause for that, man. Come yeah, on. Man. Yeah, yeah, So it's yeah. just been. Um, don't, for, don't forget West Side Connection. West Side Connection, you know. So it, it, it's, uh, it's I'm, you know, I'm just happy to be in this position to be able to, you know, rock with my cousins. That's what's up, Q, man. I'm glad you said it, man, when you said that grouch thing. None of us want to ever tell you that, but thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. You know, I get it. <laughs> Short, you said something so um, eloquent in that room. We just talking, you know, and, I, you know, I have to admit us, the three of us, it's just an affinity um, being from the Bay. It's a, a little different, right, uh, for us. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people would get the Bay. I remember coming up in L.A. confused. You know, if you was from Cali, we were all from the same city, which wasn't necessarily true. I remember first time meeting Ice Cube. Ice Cube ain't going to remember this, and I'm not trying to put that pressure on you. Um, you guys were doing a show in the Bay um, in Oakland early. This was in the 80s. Yeah, this was in the 80s. And me and King Tech was a fledgling group. And we were throwing a party, I want to say, in Hayward. And after the show, they said, NWA want to come to y'all party. And we was like, NWA want to come to the, you know, Easy was huge. Easy E, man. Round of applause for Easy. Yeah, man. <laughs> Easy was huge, man. And Cube, y'all showed up to our party, and me and Tech was so broke, we were asking, are they going to pay the $20 to get in? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Yo, and we did not pay. Y'all dude. did not pay. <laughs> and then y'all walked in, and it was like, I was mad because y'all didn't pay. <laughs> hey, yo, you know, I, I don't remember. You know, we was young, looking for somewhere to go all the time, you know, from the mall. Anybody had a party, pool parties, anything, we was showing up because we was just having fun, happy that we was... Uh, Finally getting a chance to go on the road and do things. But uh, N.W.A., they wouldn't let us in our own album release party. (laughs) Like, we hit the door, and they was like, nope, you're not getting in. It's like, man, this this our shit. What you talking about? Not getting in. What you mean we not getting in, man? No, no hats, tennis shoes, all that shit you got on, ain't getting in. It's like, dude, this, this, this for us. Jerry, I mean, not, not Jerry Heller. Brian Turner came out there uh-huh. trying to talk to the people. Nope. So we didn't get in. We went up to Bob's Big Boy or some bullshit and ate while they was having our album release party. Wow. You know what I'm Damn. saying? And, and Brian That's came crazy. up there to the table while we was eating. Like, man, I'm sorry, man. I thought we was going to be able to get y'all in and shit. So we had a habit of, uh, you know, showing up and blowing up the spot. And, uh, yeah, that didn't make the movie, but that happened for real. <laughs> That's a crazy ass <laughs> fucked up moment. It is. It is. <laughs> uh wow. Okay. Dre did DJ at our party though. He got on the turntables. Oh damn. Y'all got Dre we too. We got Dre to DJ, but you know the bay, you know, he, you know, we had some ill DJs in the bay, so uh, I think he wanted to show and prove. Short, you said I, Mount Westmore, this movement was important to me because these are areas that people at this stage of life and our careers have never 
gone before. Mm-hmm. So when the history is being told, you want to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying um, there's going to come a day where the conversation is had. Like, you know, what what is hip-hop in those years when you 50-something years old? What is it? And And the debate... It might be a debate, but it's going to definitely be a conversation, and we're going to be examples of whoever's arguing that point that hip hop is in the same, uh, it's in the sa- on the same level as rock and roll and jazz and the blues, country and, music, and country. When it comes to like an artist just performing your days out, just keep going, like keep getting money. Uh, what's his name? Willie Nelson smoking the weed and the old dude just still doing his shows. B.B. King did his shows forever. Many of our jazz musicians, you know, went on and on. And we know about the rock stars with their big tours. So hip-hop is, isn't is old enough to say that yet. But now, you know, we're about to have our 50th anniversary as hip-hop, a whole hip-hop. And we there, man. We there. We getting money. Grandmaster Flash getting money. We getting money, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's real. So I just love that. I'm doing something. I'm a part of something that is going to be solid. You could say these guys, uh, they made this much money after they did 100 albums. They added up, and we got 100 albums combined. You know what I'm saying? 100 million albums sold, like, combined. Everybody that's in, in Mount Westmore. And wow. You, when, when you want to start counting the, the plat, platinums and golds, there's a lot. There's a lot of, a lot of accolades in the group of Mount Westmore, and, and we will be in the conversation of Beyond that career, you wish you would have had. You wish you could have. These dudes still kept going, and it's successful. So, you know. I, I want to do this, man. As sh- short as all three of these dudes are probably three of the smartest men you're ever going to meet. Mm-hmm. Beyond this art form. Like, three of the smartest men for so many reasons. I've studied these guys, right? I know them. I hung out with Cube in the Bay. Forty, really, my cousin. I got to keep repeating this because nobody believe it when I say them. That's my blood, bloodline, same bloodline, same Real thing, life. you know. And so when I hear these this conversation, I think it's so important for the culture. I want to, I want to go back to this moment and to my dudes in the production room. Pull up the picture that Ice Cube and Short are both in. Not that one. Go back. Not that one. Go back. That one right there. That's dope. That's, no, no, that ain't the that, that, that no, ain't it either. Cube ain't in that one. It's another one. Not that one. Look at that. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Well, let's stop right there for a second. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Found another moment. Found That's another crazy. moment. Crazy. All right. Is, is uh, Biggie your cousin too, man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's a trip because they used to kind of, we were similar. We, I wore a Kango, he wore, you know what I'm saying? We I wore see. the Koozie outfits and all that. We dressed similar, if you can see, you know? Same And that wasn't on purpose. It was just the look in the 90s, you know? Players with the baller belly. Yeah, we had the baller belly. Yeah. <laughs> y'all live in the same height, man. Yo, that's crazy. Look how much y'all, I didn't even peep that. You know why I like this picture, Cuzzo? It's because... When people talk about you and Big, they always like to talk about the conflict. Yeah. Right? Man, y'all, we all conflict. This was after the conflict. This was after the conflict. This is the resolution. Definitely. And in hip hop, we don't get to the resolution. This was the handshake and the hug. Puffy was there too. He, he one of the pictures, they just didn't show it on this one. But uh-huh. He on too. What was that moment like in the resolution? How did it make you feel? Actually, it's a trip because we didn't even plan it. We was both in Vegas uh, for the Mike Tyson fight. He had just returned home from uh, doing some jail time, I think. It was 1995, and uh, my wife had, we, we, we was like, they go puff now. So we went over there. My wife was like, let's get a picture. So we, was, we already was chopping it up, and you know what I'm saying? Because we had already just like, you know, 86, that whole situation. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and we took that picture, man. It was legendary, you know? The resolution is something that's never discussed. Yeah, yeah. The drama. Everybody gonna ask you what happened with the beef. That's right. I'm asking you what happened with the love. The yeah. love was there, and people don't know that he shouted me out in the inside of life and death. Back then, we did shout outs in the inside of the cover, you know. So Those, it was like shout yeah. out to E4, and Remember he reached that. out to me to get on this album, but I couldn't get. I didn't get to it in time on that last album before he died, man. You know what I mean? So, can you imagine if that had happened? Come on. Imagine if him and Pac did an album together. You know what I mean? You just, God just worked. They they died so young, they did a lot in so little time, you know? Uh 
A lot. But, uh, yeah, man. Thanks for sharing. I had to get in there, man. I'm a hog this. No, nah, I'm tripping because, like, when you really sit and think about it, like, growing up with your parents, you hear people talking about, I'm retiring. I done worked 20 years. It's time for me to retire 25 and done. But I'm looking at y'all, everybody, including Sway and myself. And when Sway mentioned real world in 92, like, we've all been doing this for 30 plus years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, let that sink in. Mm-hmm. You've been doing something for 30 years. And by the grace of God, successfully. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs in this game that sometimes you can talk about it legally. You can't, all of this stuff. But for 30 years, you've been in something that you've been passionate about. And with that, and this is for each one of you, I'll start with short. What do you do, though, to decompress from all of this? Well, you know me, um, I, I, I work hard, play hard. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and I also relax hard. So you know, yeah. I, I I believe in um, it, it sounds like something the OG would say. You know, I believe in taking naps. <laughs> you know, no, no, naps, don't underestimate naps. the nap. But I, I got you. I was taking naps at a young age, and they kept saying, "Bro, how you go so hard in the paint?" And I'm like, "Bro, I, I I actually I really work hard. I get up in the morning, work hard. I stay up late at night and party hard. But then I get that little sleep in. I've just been having that balance of of just like doing me all these years, and I just think." Uh, if you get focused on one of them, too much of one, too much kicking back. You get that, you get that that struggle, and you get that foot in the door, and then it's success, and they waving and yelling at you and loving you, and then you go home and kick back, or you know what I'm saying, or you just get in there and you start having too much fun. We seen we seen the party guys burn out, Thanks. and then you know you you a workaholic ain't really like the best thing always to be either. It's like I don't play or rest, I just work. So I think that I've always been comfortable in. Tapping in, tapping out, coming to the party. I can party five nights a week, but you sitting there going, how's he doing it? Taking naps. <laughs> <laughs> Forty, what about you? Because I'll follow you on Instagram, the cooking. I'm like, he he must love it just because. Goon it's with just, a spoon. That's it. The goon, goon with, with the, the spoon. spoon. I go to bed late and I wake up early. I, you know, and I do take power naps. And I was asking, it's a trip because I've and I've been taking them more now. You know, a good fifteen minutes to really just make rejuvenate your rejuvenate your whole day. You know wow. what I mean? I was asking, I was asking Snoopy Dog there, like, how how do oh, you he do? goes hard? He goes so damn hard. I'm like Snoopy. Hey. He said, "Cause I take power naps." <laughs> <laughs> But when you're about your grit, man, you know what I'm saying? The grit don't quit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like to be getting money at this age, half a hundred years old, you understand me? Mm-hmm. This is a blessing. Yeah. God is great. Great. You understand me? And still on top of the game. I'm like I was talking to my little brother, Mac D shot. He was like, man, I wish I could just go, you know, 45 minutes, go get a hundred thousand out right quick. You know what I'm saying? On, on the show. You know what I mean? That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of Skrilla, man. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's mm-hmm. a lot of cheesecake, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of quid. <laughs> Q, what about you? You napping? <laughs> you know, it, it's really proper planning and prioritizing. You know what I'm saying? You can get a lot done if you know what to do and when to do it when to plan, when to execute, and when to kick back. And, you know, um, what you say, decompress. Um, you know, we I'm a, I'm a fan of sports, so I use that to decompress a lot. Kicking it with my wife, me and Kim, you know. Cool. Me and her, you know, always chopping it up and, you know, smelling the roses. And But it's all proper planning, like I said, prioritizing and executing, and you can get a lot, a lot, a lot done. You know, don't waste your time. And uh, you say something? I was going to say, and I was speaking on something earlier this morning. We was on Zoom. I was just talking about how, you know, these youngsters got great opportunities to get money. They're getting money. Just know that, you know what I'm saying? It ain't about how much money you got. It's about how much you keep. So, And it's all about, you know what I'm saying, really looking at it like this is a real occupation, not a mm-hmm. vacation. You know what I'm saying? No days off, no recesses, no interludes, no commercials, man. We gritting, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we got to take it serious, get money written now. You understand? Right. Hello. Um, I'll just add by saying the other thing that I love about seeing y'all, including Snoop, whatever they put in the water this last decade of it, I love seeing y'all with y'all wives and your families. There was a time in this era in this music where you just didn't see that. People hid the fact that they had girls, hid the fact that they had kids, hid the fact that they had wives. 
I love seeing y'all with y'all family. I mean, I always, I always was with my wife. You was, kids, you know but I mean? not a lot of people would do like you. Just didn't see it. I see you and your wife at the game. I see your kids in movies. Screen, it's so beautiful to me. Continue that, y'all, because to see black men doing this is a plus right now for Thank black you. and brown women. men. Thank I you. love it. For real. Shout out to my wife Tracy. I love you, Tracy. Tracy here. She's not here. She can hear us. Hey, yo. That's yo, a first. She's a business lady, too. She's she, handling some bad Yo, his wife right was his high school sweetheart. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. She was 16. I was 17. Skinny, too. Yeah. I was, I was skinny with a six-pack and a perm, hey, man. Sway. I was a <laughs> player, man. You did? I remember uh, being on, on the NWA tour, 1989. Uh -huh. Ice Cube. We get a little three, four-day breaks here and there on the tour. Ice Cube dipped to Hawaii and came back with these pictures. And it was like him and his wife. And he was like, yeah, man, this the one, man. She a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. kept her, too. She kept me, which is even more important. But that was 1989, man, for real. That was 19. Wow. Yeah, yeah we've been together since 89. We just <laughs> celebrated 30 years on November 28th. Come on, man. Yeah. Marriage. Congratulations. Y'all don't want to stand for that? Come on, give them a standing yeah, yeah. on. Yo, that's Appreciate like it, man. grandparents and parents numbers. 30? 30 Woo. years, yeah. We just celebrated Congratulations. Went to Cabo and hung out in Mexico. It was cool. But it's a different kind of 30. 30 years famous? Ain't nobody been <laughs> famous as long as, you know, other than LL, seemed like it's famous for at this height as long as Ice Cube. 30 years famous is like 90 years yeah. <laughs> of, of regular, <laughs> right? Yeah, television, what, what, film, that's crazy. What I appreciate to build on what Heather says is you all involve your wives in your business. Right, and a lot of folk, when we're younger men, we tend to just kind of do our business to ourselves and come home and report the results or whatever the case may be. Where did you learn that? Like, I mean, she one of the smartest people I know, so I'd be crazy not to use her, you know, even if it's just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. You know, she used to she used to run lynch my records for a while when I first opened it, and um, you know, so she's just a smart you know, very in tune person, you know what I mean? She's, you know, everything I need to be who I am. So, you know, we we stuck, you know, we see you in 60 years, you know, I'll be here talking about my 60 year anniversary, you know what I'm saying, yeah. one day. Snoop so. does the same thing with his wife. Yeah. She's right there in the right business. There. I'm right behind what, what you. About, what about me, y'all? I was going to ask you, sure. Uh, did you get you didn't I, get married, yo? Did you? I, I did not get married, but okay. I have a beautiful daughter. You have a daughter, and Family. I'm not hanging out in clubs no more. I'm not trying to have a bunch of girlfriends. I'm 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 settled and chilling. Okay. And I want to speak up for y'all. Should stand up for that yeah. shit. Come on, y'all. <laughs> He used to be Shorty the Pimp. Stand up. <laughs> I still I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, damn. I can't throw my players under the bus, though, man. Keep on playing, players. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep on playing. Don't listen to all this, man. Keep playing. Hey, when you find the right one, man, pull the trigger. Don't don't trip. That's real. That's Pulling real, the trigger. Getting over that hump. Man, we just had our, what, 91? From 91. We got I got married in 91, so I was, what, in 86? 31. 91. So how many years is that? Uh, that's 35. I'm talking about married. Married? 31. 31. 31. 31. Yep. So I'm 31, 31 years strong. If it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't be where I'm at, straight up, because we was living off of love. BR before rap. Uh, BS before streets. You feel me? <laughs> like, it was just, I just spotted somebody. I said, she's beautiful. I love her. Off top. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I macked her down, and I stuck with her. <laughs> 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 and, and we got two sons, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Young Issue and Droopy. And Droopy was Little E back in 1993 on Federal Album. He had, we had a, a, a skit on there called Questions. And then on In a Major Way, he was rapping at five years old. And uh, it was a song called it's, it's All Bad. So he was one of the first kid rappers at five years old on a platinum album in a major way, one of my biggest albums, if not of all time. Hello. Sprinkle me, man. The album was Sprinkle Me on there, yeah, yeah. I know that, because I'm, I'm live on camp. I played that every day. That was that one right there. That was that one, right? Yes, sir. Short, you changed you change diapers? What was your diaper game like? Uh, I stepped in probably like near the end of that phase, you know, like around, <laughs> I, at first, like the, the first, them little, them little, uh, them little, 
infant wet ones, I was like, I ain't touching that. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, I remember how it came about too. Uh, I was I was left alone. Probably you know one of the first times I was left alone. Like mom's is out floating around, and it's just me and the baby. How, hold and, up, hold up, and it happened. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. How long? Did you smell the shit before you decided that it got to be you? It's the, That's got to change. Day. Was so y'all it 30 come, minutes, y'all, y'all, 40 minutes, an hour? Y'all come it? from way back. This is modern days. I immediately jumped on FaceTime. What do I do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I propped the phone up and got instructions, bro. Like it's, it's, this, this is this hilarious. Is technology, man. <laughs> So I got a question. Can I ask him a question? <laughs> Can he ask yeah, me yeah. a question? When you, was that, like, did it stress you out? Was you kind of nervous when you had to hold the neck when she was first born, like the, the head? Yeah, it, it, it took a while, Earl, you know yeah. what I mean? But you're going to have a second chance in a minute. You're about to be a grandpa soon. I know, no. Soon, no, so. seriously, I got a little niece. And I hadn't held a, held a baby in so long. And a nephew. Matt I've been, see, I've been seeing Snoop on the gram as yeah. a granddaddy. Yeah. Hey. I hadn't held, I hadn't held a baby it. in hella long. And I was like, oh, let me see if I remember how to do this. Then I started getting the hang of, oh, this ain't Nathan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, sure. what you going to teach? You know, I got a 24-year-old daughter. Yep. Right? I've been, I've been, yep. I've been, I've been hearing the journey on, on the radio right. show. I've been hearing. Thank you. By the way, have y'all heard Too Short on Sirius XM? Have you heard his show? Check it out. I'll, check yo, it out. I'm so impressed. Yo, I love what you do, man. I, I love. Just, I love hip hop. So whatever, yeah. however you interpret anything I'm doing in life, it has a lot to do with hip hop. A lot yeah. of it. But your wealth of knowledge is amazing. I'm wondering how you're gonna use that knowledge to teach your daughter about men. Uh, well, you know, I just think that uh, the truth carries a lot of weight, and just keeping keeping it really real. So you know, I'm not trying to push a child in any direction. I'm just trying to give you that game. And the game that I have happens to come from, you know, different places. It's from an intellect point of view. It's from a street point of view. It's from a pimp point of view. So I'm definitely like, I mean, one of the first things I'm going to tell is uh, don't fall for nobody that wears a pinky ring. That's one of the That's first it? things. Okay, good. We need to- <laughs> you said that to me. I told you that. I told you. Dudes with pinky yeah, rings. Because I wore a pinky ring all my life. Avoid the pinky yeah, ring Pinky dudes. ring, right? That's a red flag. The oh, pinky shit. ring is a red, <laughs> red With the long nail. With no other oh, rings. They got, a, they got one. With the long nail. What's with the long nail? What you think that ring? long nail? We ain't speaking on it. <laughs> no, yeah, the long, long nail. nail. No, we ain't doing the nail. But, but if you got eight, so eight fingers, two thumbs, and one ring. Exactly. And wear them here. No, that, no, 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 that's it. That ain't it. That's a sign. Oh, uh, shit. I'm flying to the Bay uh, Friday uh, to host a ceremony that's taking place Saturday in Oakland, uh, uh, where we're from, right down the street from my grandmother's house on Foothill Boulevard, uh, right next to a high school called Fremont, because they're renaming a street after Too Short. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up. Yeah, man. I'm pulling up too. You know I'm there, right? They they asked me what street, like what did I want? They like you want downtown, you want to like like Jack London Square. I'm like, no, it got to be in East Oakland. And while you're at it, might as well just do the street that I walked down the most <laughs> when I was a little dude. Like I walked, I walked High Street so much. Yeah. Like just foot. You know, you just got the memories of foot on yeah, the ground. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, put name the street that I walked down the most. What before. that mean to you though, man? Uh, it means like you think back on those those cold Bay Area m- mornings, getting to school with the hoodie and you just bundled up. You know, it ain't like New York snow, but it's 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 cold. And yeah. yeah. Bay Area mornings is cold. Just you know, just just that journey walking down the street, dreaming, bro. Yeah. Just dreaming the dream, like dreaming the dream. And and one thing I said about our city, I wrote down one day. Me and Mr. Fab made a song about it. I wrote on a list all the Oakland legends. And the list kept getting longer and longer. Mm-hmm. And I just remember being little, seeing people like Reggie Jackson or, or you know, yep. Dave Stewart or somebody. You, you would just see people that made it. Like you knew Bill Russell was from, from the town, you know? Mm-hmm. And Ricky, Henry, Ricky Henderson. <clears throat> Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson, I'm saying he was breaking the, the, the stealing bases record, but he was riding right down the street waving at you. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just remember like the dream in a little ass city like Oakland, the dream was always real. It was always real. Gotta love it, man. Give it up yeah. for Too Short, man. I have to make that one. Hey, Q, Q, um, when, when I think it was one, of, one of them was naming um, albums, America's Most Wanted, 
um, really landed in my in my DNA uh, when you made that project. That was one of my favorite projects. Thank you. Um, by you, what is one of your favorite projects by you? I mean, that one's dope because I got a chance to work with uh, the Bomb Squad. Mm-hmm. You know, Chuck D, Eric Sadler, Keith Shock. I mean. Yeah, Eric Sadler, Keith Shockley, Hank Shockley. Um, and and they they showed me, you know, a different way to make a record, you know. Um, and um, I learned a lot about, you know, who I am just as a, you know, black man in America um, from being around those guys. Um, but I, I think my favorite record is, is probably Death Certificate. Um, because, you know, I just think it's, uh, you know, kind of a, a commentary on where we were at that time, you know, like a time capsule. Um, and so that's, that's probably my favorite record, but, but I like my laugh now, cry later record too. You know, that, that's dope. Raw footage is dope. You know, I got a few. Yeah, I got a few. Um, in a major way. Was um, for you, I mean, you had a lot of, I mean, in a major way to me was the one that catapulted you, right, uh, to a whole nother level. But a lot of times artists have their own favorites. What was your favorite? Uh, it was in a major way. Uh, that made um, more impact. And, well, no, I can't say that because Get a Report Card was in the, in the 2000s. And that made a big worldwide impact, you know, because we had a movement in the Bay called the Hype Me Movement, and I gave it to them hard. Me and Short, we gave it to them, you know, they, them, them days, you know what I'm saying? And uh, But my favorite, one of my favorites is uh, the element of surprise. I was just telling somebody, asked me what was one of my favorite songs. It's always like um, album cuts. So one of my album cuts was 999,999 plus a dollar equals a meal ticket. That's actually what it was really spelled. Like, I mean, that's how it was really labeled as a song. You know what I mean? It was one of the if y- y'all Google that when you get you, you gonna say, man, Fody was going so sick on that. You understand me? <laughs> it was the music, the Rick Rock did the beat, it was the it was the sound, it was sinister, it was mob, we call it mob music. Too short created the sound of mob music. I gave it the title and we kept the legacy going by continually doing mob That's music. That's that really slow funk with a whole lot of bass and it just is so sinister that you can't you can't not like it. Like you it try to be sound like eerie, like you know, <laughs> like spooky. Like you understand what I'm saying? It's a certain sound, but uh, yeah, that was in a major way, baby. In a major way, yeah. right? Tupac was on that album too. Exactly. Dusted yeah. and disgusted. Yeah. Yes, that was a slap. I love that, man. Cause um, I'm gonna interject myself into your story because we're cousins <laughs> and we got to share the same DNA. Yes, sir. We definitely do. <laughs> very true story. Based very on true, a true story. story. Yeah, he called me and told me, and I was like, stop playing. <laughs> And then it was true. Um, he did his research. We, we we did the family tree and everything. It was like official, like a military missile. You dig? Come on, man. But that was at a time <laughs> when my own personal, uh, King Tech and I, our careers, we, you know, uh, this goes hand in hand, right? We we couldn't accomplish what we accomplished without playing music that y'all made, or, you know, or talking about moments that y'all had or being inspired by things that y'all have done. You know, and so when In a Major Way came out, um, I was able to utilize your music for all kinds of reasons. Rather, you know, I'm at the club trying to hype the crowd or, you know, I'm trying to get my ratings up on the radio show. So I'm playing your music. I'm playing your music. I'm playing your music. Y'all helping us out the same way. It was a mutually beneficial, symbiotic, you know, interaction between us, right? Yeah, for sure. And and so, uh, short, your life is born to back. And life is, but life is. I felt like I remember you went platinum with life is, right? It, it went double platinum. Double but, um, platinum. It's the only one I got that's double platinum. I got a lot of platinums, but that's the only one that's double. And I always attribute. Uh, I give credit to Easy E because you know Easy E passed at a young age, but uh, Easy E like had this lineage that you're sitting here looking at Ice Cube and what he branched off to be, and uh, Dre and what he branched off to be, and Snoop and what he branched off to be, and and in those branches you find the M and M's and the Fifty Cents and it's you know it's just so much. It's 
the Friday movies and I mean all this stuff that was born from like one guy just dreaming. Easy E called me personally. It was like you know like like Q told me it was like him and Easy when they first got the first two short tape they played it over and over again. They was like this dude is crazy. But Easy called me on the phone. It was like hey man you want to go on tour? And I'm like hell yeah I want to go on tour. That was the straight out of Compton tour. Mm-hmm. And when I went on that tour I had dropped the album in January of. 89, early 89, and it just sold like 300,000 copies immediately, which is really good. I get on the tour, and when the tour is over, I'm at 800,000. Then, like, just weeks after the tour is over, it's just selling because we went out there promoting. Now I'm at 1.3, you know, and I'm like, that is my best-selling album. I think that that was me. It was pivotal in my career. We all have that moment where your career just turns that corner and it's on and popping, and that was that moment for me, but when I when I as I started growing, I met Aunt Banks. Then the then the production goes up a notch and we start going, you know, life is too short is my first platinum, but then it goes another platinum, another platinum, another platinum, another platinum. That's me and Aunt Banks. We're in the studio with Shorty B and Pee Wee and you know, they was also members of Digital Underground. People don't know we had the same members and stuff, you know, the same crew making all that funky music. But I just think uh when we got to the to the apex of what it was, we made an album called Getting It, yeah. album number 10. And when you listen to that album, it's all those years of trying to figure it out, we figured it out. Figured it and out. that's my one, because I sit there and go, nothing is wrong with the production or the the, the, the mixes, it's just, it's that moment, you know? Yeah, man, that man, shit, you just, I just had a nostalgia moment. Give that man a round of applause, I'm gonna cry right there. Should be getting it, getting it. I feel like we're approaching the two-year anniversary of the verses. Is that right? It's two years since y'all did the verses. It was December. December, December nineteenth. I don't December remember the date. Yeah, it was December nineteenth. <laughs> okay. Eighteenth. Yeah, One and day. two years ago, right? Eighteenth to eighteenth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would happen if a, there was a verses with E Forty and Too Short versus Ice Cube and Snoop? Mount Westmore would happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't going to do no verses yeah, versus each other, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I would ever do a versus, you know. I think the format shouldn't be two MCs that you love versus each other, but two MCs that you love admiring each other, you know, like, you know, if I was sitting there with, with you know, a LL, you know, I'd be like, LL, uh, do rock the bells. Come on, give it to me, baby. Do rock the bells. And he would look at me and be like, yo, give me once upon a time in the projects. You know what I'm saying? And to me, that's it's love. You know, I don't want to go against the greats. You know, why? Like, you know, they have fun because they, they, they have fun together about, and they, they, um, clown with each other over stuff all the time. But some of these crews that got up there, you could tell that they weren't really fucking with each other. Tension. And so, you know, who needs it? You know what I'm saying? It's enough of that. So, you know, I would flip it and it wouldn't be about verses, but it would be about, you know, the 10 songs I love that I need you to do right now. And then he's like, give me 10 I love that I need you to do right now. And then it's all love and it ain't nobody you know, tripping at the end. Ain't no winners, ain't no losers, none of that silly shit. I like that, man. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Mount Westmore is here, man. I want to go into a video real quick to rock out and come back and let you guys ask a couple of questions. Who got questions? Just show of hands. Okay, make sure your questions are intelligent. Uh, <laughs> don't waste our time here, man. It's been a long day. Haven't been, we, been, we already did a morning show already today. Shows already. All right, let's go into this video with Mount Westmore. Y'all rock out to it, okay? And uh, we'll come back with some more questions. What's up, Woof? Yo, yo, how, how, when y'all formulated the business, y'all, y'all sat at a round table and said, okay, this is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to divide it? Yeah. Um, that was actually the hardest part. That was the most complicated part. Doing the music was fun. You know, we was, uh, you know, too short could tell you exactly how everything came came up you know together but that part was easy fun we was having a ball 
But it's complicated funk trying to pull four guys with 30 years of doing their own business mm -hmm. to form a company like uh, Mount Westmore. Um, but we got it done, you know what I mean? And uh, everybody worked together. Uh, we've all uh, taken on a, a, a manager that, that works with the group, you know what I mean? It's not none of our personal managers, but my man Tony Draper, shout out to Tony Draper, you know, Suave House. He, uh, Draper? Tony Draper's you our manager. some history on Tony Draper, because yeah. they don't know, man. Tony Draper is one of the, you know, biggest and uh, one of the smartest dudes in hip hop that, you know, I don't know if you know him or not, but you should know him. You know, he's, he's very low key, you know what I mean? He don't like the spotlight, don't like the camera, but he get a lot done. He's always been an independent guy, you know, um, from Memphis, but he did most of his damage out of Houston. And um, it's just been a great thing to work with Tony. We all been knowing him over 30 years. We all argue on who knew him the longest. I knew him, <laughs> I knew him the longest. And so <laughs> it, it's cool that that we we have a a person like him because he knows you know the dynamic of the group, the magnitude of the group, and he's able to articulate it to people when we're not there. You know, he won't he won't let you not um, salute. You know what I mean? Uh, the work that we've done. And and the fact that we've gotten together, he makes sure everybody understand the movie. And so um, he's the perfect uh, manager for the group because, you know, he can be candid with all of us. He can be real with us. Um, he ain't starstruck, you know what I mean? So he's the right person at the right time. And knock your socks off, DJ Pooh is our DJ. On, so DJ we Poo. are iconic all the way around. You you and Pooh have a really special relationship, man. Can you can you talk about DJ Pooh and y'all relationship? DJ Pooh is a genius. Um, you know, he's been doing West Coast music and been part of hip hop longer than, you know, I can remember. You know, I remember, you know, uh even my man, you know, Trey and would would admire Pooh's get down. You know, Pooh is one of the first dudes to to be uh, national with it. You know, he was straight out the hood, but he was working with LL Cool J and Bobcat, you know what I'm saying, on the Bigger Than Defa record, you know. He he helped, uh, you know, bring songs like uh, Going Back to Cali, he made him, you know, re relevant because he was showing LL what Cali was like. You know, this is this is Pooh's history. Um, you know, King T, you know, another dude who do don't get enough credit, but King T came out right after Ice T, you know, before Easy and before NWA. And King he had T slaps. Had, you know, he had hits, you know, produced by DJ Pooh. Uh, DJ Pooh, you know, helped me write Friday, you know, the first Friday movie um, in 1995. He also helped put together Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you know what I mean? Or San Andreas, sorry. And uh, so he been an undercover uh you know, pioneer. Yeah, you know, secret weapon. Three strikes. You know, he for, put me in for, three strikes. Forever. Yeah, you the know, movie, not, not counting movie. the movies he did. Yeah, yeah. Pooh got one of the best scenes in Friday too. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, he gonna cry in the car, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, all right, this is what I want to do. Um, let's do some questions. Y'all ready? Hey. You know, we talked about this. I lectured y'all earlier, so you know, make sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Who got the first question? Put you in that man in the blue shirt. Go ahead and give it to him. How you guys doing? My name is Michael from Gardena. What's up? Uh, my question to you guys is, with so many legends on this project, how the hell y'all choose the order? Who go first? Who? Because, I mean. Too hey. short. Too short. No, the whole breakdown on how we got down like that. Yo, so it's it's, it's a formula, man. Uh, we, we, got on the, um, we got on the phone call. Everybody agreed to be in the group. The next thing is uh, somebody suggested we start like a group tech. So we would... We would keep this group text going, and we would, you know, periodically jump on the phone. Like quite often, like jump on a, either a FaceTime with all four of us, or maybe a Zoom or something. This is night. This is twenty twenty quarantine time. So, um, the the process went. A beat would get sent to the group text. It'd just be like an MP three, a pop up in the group text, and nobody's like, like nobody's saying, "Oh, that's a dope beat." Oh, I'm about to get down. Nobody said nothing. 
the beat come up, and you just wait a little while, and then bam, the beat pops back up again, but this time it got an E-40 verse on it. You know, nobody say, ooh, dope verse E-40. Nobody say nothing. Bam, pop up again. Now I got Snoop Dogg and E-40 on it. So now that, that means the last two guys is like thinking like, well, shit, let me make a move, you know? <laughs> and the songs will start coming to life, and then, and then, you know, sometimes a beat would come up, Nobody would say nothing. No verse would ever come back. Then obviously you assume we all ain't agreeing on that. And I think that uh, you know E Forty's a he's a quick with it. He was he was quarantined. It seemed like he slept in his studio because he jumped on hella first verses. Like he just like just be quick with it. And Forty was sending a lot of beats, and he was send us the beat already with the first verse on it. So it'd be the first verse. <laughs> 40 with the slick Intro talking on the beginning. The hook, <laughs> the hook go, and it make it easy on all of us. You know, Snoop did the same thing too. Snoop jumped a few off real quick. But it was just like um the order really went was like, what you doing that day? Get on the song. I remember Ice Cube saying, like, really like with that Ice Cube voice, you niggas ain't gonna be putting me last on all the songs. <laughs> he did say that. Yeah, you know, it seemed like I was getting the beat and it was already three <laughs> verses on it. I'm like, oh, hold up, swole up. You know what I'm saying? Let me uh let me you know, then I said, okay, that means I ain't coming up with enough beats. So I started uh, sending beats with the first on the first verse verse on yeah. it already. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Real. So it was it was uh it was fun to work that way. And um it, it opened up a lot of uh creativity. You know, they gave us some of those, you know, Northern Bay, Bay Area slaps that I probably wouldn't have rapped on. If it wasn't for E forty teeing it up, you know, and 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 too short, uh, you know, giving it the uh, the stamp of approval. So you know, it opened us up as MCs to to work on the like different varieties of beats, rhymes, uh, cadences, hooks, uh, and it was fun to to work that way. When you say that, like you, because that you probably wouldn't rap on it. And that's, you know, even we're all from the same era, from the same state. But there are those nuanced differences. You said it earlier. You said, Without a doubt. You said it just sound like West Coast, it just sound West Coast to people outside of California. Yeah. But to us, it's very different. Very we're, different. You know. So Cal, North Cal. Yeah, I mean, the, the Bay got their own style. You know, it's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to duplicate what they doing up there because that's they style like southern california we got our own style and so um i respect them too much uh to not get a signature on one of those you know because i don't want to i don't want to jump on it if it's not gonna be a, a bay area slap you know what i'm saying they gotta let me know this gonna work this gonna work in in in, in our area this gonna work and uh, that give us the, that gave me the confidence, you know. I've never worked with with artists on this level and, and been in the same group. Yeah, you know, we was with Easy, we was with Dre, but we were I wasn't looking at them niggas like superstars. You know, they was just like we was arguing all the time on what need to be there. Here, I trust Forty. You know, um, I trust Too Short. I trust Snoop. You know, if they say, "Yo, let's do it this way." I'm rolling with it, just like if I say, yo, let's do it this way, they rolling with it. And that is a comfort zone that uh, that I you know, love to be a part of. Oh, that's dope. Um, let's, let's get some more questions from the audience. Um, you, you go ahead, man, you go ahead, you pick. <laughs> Wait, hold on, is that Linnell? Yes, it that's is. That's LL, uh, what up, LL? you remembering my name, let Come me stand on. up. You, I, I stand up, go ahead and stand up. All right, so I'm Linnell. I'm originally from Bakersfield, um, but I'm now living here in L.A., and my question is a little different than what everybody else is asking. So when Heather B. and Sway um, introduced you guys, they said that you guys are icons, that you are really um, making a difference right now, and you have a lot of influence. So I want to know, how are you guys using that influence right now in regards to mental health? because there's a lot going on in the community, especially with black people, and especially in the, the hip hop world, period. You know, and I watched you guys on Million Dollars Worth of Game, and you guys were talking about how basically your albums help to raise a lot of people. 
And I'm one of those individuals. I'm not, I'm not a male, but I'm a woman. I might think I'm a male sometimes, <laughs> but I'm not. But I'm one of those individuals that has grown and learned from your albums. So what are you guys doing to help in that area to use your influence to be able to tell us that, you know, mental health is something that's important and that we need to really implement into our self-care routines? I think we, you know, we do it all the time in some way, shape, or form in the music, telling people how to um, to work on solutions and, and uh, how to, you know, hopefully get out of these tough situations that they find themselves in sometime growing up in the neighborhoods that we all come from. Um, you know, I've done things, you know, like with, uh, you know, I got a league called the Big Three, and um, we were the first league to embrace mental health. Um, you know, we got a couple of, of uh, players who were basically blackballed from the NBA. Uh, Royce White is one of them because he had some issues, you know, with flying and, you know, and, and, and most leagues used to push those guys away. And we, we went the opposite way. We was like, yo, let's embrace, let's embrace these guys and figure out what can we do to help our athletes or just people with, with mental health, like, you know, shake that stigma. And, you know, it's not uh, something you should shun. It's something that you should, you know, try to understand and help. And so in that way, we made a big, big statement. Um, but, I, you know, we, we can definitely do better in hip hop. You know, uh, that's that's a good point that we should all be uh, talking about, you know, how to ease your mind, how to uh, take care of yourself. Um, and, you know, sometimes the stuff in your head um, can can make make it feel like the walls are closing in on you. And. Um, but sometimes it's all in your head, you know. It's it's really how you, you know, put things in proper perspective, you know, which we all can do a better job at that. You know, we all need a little mental help when it comes to just making a, making a, a, a sense out this crazy world that we live in. Um, so, you know, I think that's a good point. I think we all could do better. You know, we always try to lace the youngsters with game. You know, we got Free a song on here called Lace You Up. Free song called Free Game. But uh, we can speak on it more without a doubt, and I think we should. Hey, I, I want to say um, that um, as a professional game spitter, and that's that's a term that we use freely, game spitters, as opposed to rappers, I think that just in the game alone, that this, this thing that we talk about, me, 40, and, you know, coming from up top, that the game is therapeutic. It is therapy. It is, it, it is a therapist. And if you um, listen to... Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, Too Short, E-40. If you strip away the little humor that we put in there and, you know, the braggadocious parts of it, it's all logic. It's very logical, this stuff that Snoop Dogg has been saying to you over these years. And Ice Cube, it's logic. It's like this is how you, you know, accept things. This is how you project things, you know what I'm saying? And we're just telling you how to do it, man. We, we experience in life. We're very intelligent. We're running back to you. So I think the music is therapeutic in itself, period. Not all hip hop, but I stand up for my guys in this group that we have been teaching you for years, and this album continues those lessons of just logic. Period. Absolutely, get activated. All right, uh, let's do a couple more. This is for them at this point. Good morning. My name is Jesse. I'm from Watts, California. My question is on the topic of mental health. Uh, I'm a combat veteran, um, retired from the U.S. Thank Navy. you for Please your service, service brother. Right. Thank you. I, you know, I spent 24 years in the Navy. My, this is my wife. We've been married 15 years next week. Congratulations. Hello. Congratulations. She's, Congratulations. Also, she's also a Navy veteran also. And, I, you know, well, I'm a, you I got service. PTSD, so I know how it feels. Music is therapy. Because when I was deployed overseas, when I was in Tokyo, when I was in Japan, when I was out there, music is what actually helped, you know, get me through some of these things. Listening to Ice Cube, Black Korea, when, when, when my city was burning down. You know what I mean? Those type of um, movements help people like us get through it. So my question is, another West Coast legend recently made some comments um, in regards to maybe not getting the recognition, and that uh, West Coast legend, DJ Quick, he said, yo, you know, and when I read it, 
it sounded like he was crying for help. Like, you know, he was just sitting there just saying these words. I would love to see the collaboration with DJ Quick, another West Coast legend, making beats with Mount Westmore. Has anybody ever reached out to Quick for some production? Yeah, we, we got we, we got, got a song that he produced. That it's not on this album, but like I said, we recorded fifty albums. I mean, fifty songs. I'm sorry, fifty songs. Let me get that right. We don't want to start that. Don't make a sound bite out of that. Fifty songs. That's a lot of songs, though. Yeah, he we did. And a song. he did a lot of songs. I mean, shows with us. Go yeah, ahead. we 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 perform with Quick. You know, a lot. You know, I got uh, some shows coming up with him. Definitely a West Coast legend. Definitely could have been in this group. Easy. You know, without a doubt. Um, we got a song, um, damn, we got a song with him called Give Me My Flowers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, it's, 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 you know, it, it's a shame that everybody that's dope like him, you know, is not, um, you know, where, where, where he want to be in the minds of, of hip hop, um, legends or whatever, but. He a legend in my mind, you know what I mean? Yes. Hall of hey, Famer. Make, make no mistake. Uh, he one of the greatest. Too. DJ wanted... Quick is Mount Westmore. Dr. Dre is. Ice T is. Yeah. Warren G is. They all they all Mount Westmore. We all that. Without we a know doubt. it too. So, you know, um, I agree with you. We need to give Quick more love, man. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? He a, Shout out to Quick. He, he a reason why our music sounds so good on the West Real talk. Real talk. Facts. Shout out to DJ Quick. Thank you all for being here. I have a moment. I'm Jay Kevin from South Central. Wait, hold up, Kev. Don't do that, man. <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> this is your, this, me and this man have worked together for decades. He was one of the first people I worked with at MTV. He's an amazing producer. He's a purveyor of the culture. He um, always wanted the truth out. Kev hit me just uh, last week to tell me about... Um, a project that we're gonna be working on. Yeah, yeah. And I think you all will be involved at some point if you if you're so gracious about telling the West Coast story um uh, and in 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 parts but the true stories, not not the the washover story, not the generalization stories that you could read on Wikipedia, you know, but you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the real stories, who are these true like when you talk about LA Posse or you know, and all these different Folk like so, Kev is a special guy. So I wanted to recognize you, bro. Thank you, man. appreciate it. Shout that. out to you, Kev. Yeah, yeah, man. We did the Bobby Brown doc together, mm -hmm. right? I have more of a moment of gratitude for all of you for what you've done for our culture. Um, E40, you and I worked together on California Love. I was like, that guy's cool. Too short, not yet. But Q, you know, we should always give thanks. It's hard, you know. You work and you you play and you live. Cube was very special in my career. Before I knew what I was doing, I did uh, We Want Easy and the whole jail scene, you know? And I was like, this is some cool shit, you know? And then years later, uh, when I knew what I was doing a little bit more, um, what was the thing we did? Uh, Up in Smoke. And that was a beautiful thing. So I say it to say gratitude to you and all of you. Could you have a moment to reflect after a while? You sit back. Look at your reels, like, and I'll say it on all of the up and smoke stuff. Cubes, yours is the best. Oh, thank you, man. The, the coming it. down and the snowflakes and all that. I tell my editors, make sure you use that in my reel. Whatever you do, wow. use that. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you. And also, you look at the branches of Easy E. From that came uh, you, mm -hmm. you and Easy, um, you and Gary Gray. I think we did dress yeah. code or something like that. Dress code, yeah. That's uh, my man Dub C. And then from that, I. Recognize how good mm -hmm. F. Gary Gray was, and then he ended up doing my True to the Game video. That's it, True to it the Game. It was a good one. day uh, video, um, really, though. So, and then we did the Friday movies. We did a bunch of St. Ives commercials together, you know. Um, so, man, thanks for uh, yeah. reminding Beautiful. me about all that. Yeah, and Gary was my PA on the playground. Yeah. He came yeah. in, Mr. I want to be, you know, in the music business. I want to work with you. Come on, kid, let's go. <laughs> it's a great thing, man. So it's great to give back. It's my whole point. It is, you know, reaching and and grabbing this talent. You know, uh, Dre reached out and grabbed me um, at a, at a certain point, and and that's what we all need to um, to shine. You know, we all, you know, these guys are self made. Nobody reached and grabbed them, but uh, with me, I was, 
you know, somewhat, you know, t- taken under the wing of the world class wrecking crew, Lonzo Williams, um, you know, who's, you know, who don't get enough credit, you know, Grandmaster Lonzo, the world class wrecking crew, don't get enough credit for what he did to spark this too. He the first one that gave Dre a DJ job. Uh, he the one first one that did a record with Dr. Dre called Surgery. Um, so, you know, these are, you know, I hope you're going to talk about Roger Clayton and Tidy T and Mixed Master Spade and, you know, Uncle Jam's Army. The Battle uh, Ram? You know, uh, yeah, you know, DJ uh, Joe Cooley and, and, you know, the greats, Bob Cat, Egyptian Lover, um, you know, Rodney O., you know what I'm saying? It's Ice like, T. Yeah, without a doubt. So I would love to be a part of that project in any way, shape, or form. There it is, man. All right. Um, E-40, is. there's no other rapper in the ex- existence of hip-hop that's more original. Anybody want to debate it? No debate. Give, no debate. Hey, can we get your stat, man? Give me your stat. I got more top 200 album, t- more top 200 Billboard album entries than anyone in hip hop. And that's a lot of work, a lot of work. Come on, He man. a wordsmith. We still using words that he threw away a decade ago, maybe two decades ago. We still using them every day. But, you know, every time I see 40, he's saying something new that make <laughs> me smile, you know what I mean? So, shout out to 40, man. The culture Thank you, needs you. The culture should be thanking you every day for 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 keeping us, you know what I mean, just flossy with it. Thank you. I appreciate that, fam. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All Seriously. right. Ice Cube, there's no other voice. There's some powerful voices, but there's no other voice that's more powerful. Anybody want to debate that? <laughs> 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 okay, good, good. All right. Too Short was the first out of the bay that I know of. No disrespect to my cousin because I feel like... Oh, he's a, my big bro. Okay. He, I right. Self-made right. Kool-Aid yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. Straight yeah. up. Just I man. tell this story all the time. <laughs> Nobody in hip-hop I knew had houses with a pool. With a dollar <laughs> sign in the pool. And a dollar <laughs> sign in the pool. <laughs> I don't know what year that was, but... The Probably sim- 79 or some <laughs> shit. About 72. <laughs> no, that, that was that was definitely 1990 because I was coming off the straight out of Compton to a bank the fuck up. <laughs> bank the fuck up, right? That's when I knew that I could buy a house on my own at a young age. Mm-hmm. You don't even know this shit. Like one day I'm going to tell all, you know, how this stuff influenced me. But me and King Tech bought our first house in 94. You, you, I was like, we could own houses? Yeah. This young? You know, so, and he was the first to, through trial and error, he was our sacrificial lamb. He broke the blueprint of independent, and being independent from Northern California that influenced the whole country. That was too short. I used to see him on the back of a bus with a boom box playing cassette tapes. Were you selling them? The cassettes were for sale, yeah. yeah. How much were you selling them for back then? It was anywhere from 5 to 20 bucks, depending on what the, you know, if you wanted the regular, it was 5 If you wanted the custom-made, it was 20 Tell them about the custom-made. We used to make custom-made tapes. We, like, pull up to the hood. My whole clientele was drug dealers. So we we just went to people who had cash in pocket and went from turf to turf to turf, which was a very dangerous thing. But I had a partner named Freddie B who was well-liked across the board. So we pull up on all the turfs. And basically, you know, um, it kind of happened by accident at first, but after a while, we used to take orders. I'm like, okay, your name's Sway. You from uh, you from 38th? Okay, um, what you want? You want? You got a blue cutlass? Okay, I come back and n- name a couple of your homies, and the next day you'll have a custom made tape all about you. And it was very popular around the city. I think it was great marketing. That was dope, bro. It was you know, crazy. It, it, was it was another. It was another, some other dudes out of Richmond, right California. Now. That I was gonna yeah. say. Yeah, now. I was saying we should so do that too. Marketing too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might need. We need. Yeah, don't put this one out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Let me just say this. Let me just say this real quick. I want to intervene, but it was some other brothers out of Richmond, Calvin T. Calvin T. and Magic Mike doing the same thing around the same time that I grew yes. up on, along with Too Short. I grew up with Short and them. You know what I'm saying? If so you go to the Bay Area lineage of hip hop, you come from. 
the too short formula, uh-huh. or you come from the E40 formula. Yep. I got it from Dean Hodges and 75 Girls Records. Mm-hmm. He got it from uh, Uncle St. Charles. I, I, Saint I gotta, Charles. Say, I gotta Charles. say, those hieroglyphics got a they got their lane too. You know, well, the hieroglyphics get, is them the little homies, man. Them yeah, the homies, okay, yeah, they yeah. came in, they went their route, but they still from the spirit. Yeah, them the little right. homies. I remember a little casual uh-huh. sitting on the porch when mm-hmm. my homie Boo was. God bless. Going with his big yeah. sister. Yeah, we, we all family, man. Them the family dudes. Like it's all, all the, the, the the bay is little. It's it's, it's little when it comes to hip hop. And, and Uncle St. Charles was responsible for helping Master P, mm-hmm. us and and a whole bunch of artists come mm-hmm. up. And my uncle is my it's my real uncle. He's my mama's brother. You understand? So I just shout out oh, to St. Charles. Uncle? He was one of the independent like pioneers of all this. Like he had a big ass book. With all the retailers that sold hip hop, and he was sent out cassettes and a one sheet, giving you information about this group, and that's how he got the orders in. That's how we got the pre orders. You understand me? And he just showed us so much, man. So shout out to St. Charles. Shout out to St. Charles, man. Do it and, yourself. And I got a cube. I can't sit next to you and not shout out the brother I went to junior high and high school with, play little league football, EA Ski. Shout out yeah, to EA Ski, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Ski. You know, we play for the Dynamites, you know. Uh, and EA Ski is an iconic, legendary, successful, very successful. You know, we we used to call him the Dr. Dre of the Bay. So when you just slid that in like real subtle, like, you know, we play for the Dynamite. That's like legendary, the Oakland Dynamites. Remember That's the like Oakland Dynamite. legendary. I'm from to, so you ain't never told me you about a, that, man. You ain't tell never them. told me you was a Dynamite, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man, I played a couple. Was of you years. a running back's way? I was a linebacker and a cornerback. I mean, you was a kid celebrity. No yeah. He was a celeb as a yeah, kid. Yeah, Boy, it was famous. The dynamite. Short just told you. Short Heather's just looking told at me like, stop, yeah. stop, short, stop. Was y'all I, was y'all uniforms blue or black? Purple and purple, gold. Man. Purple, man. I knew purple something that poked out oh, yeah. though. Yeah. Purple, yeah, it was gold, purple. purple. I remember There's the no dynamite. No pictures of sway in his uniform though. Where the receipts at? I got my mother on 23rd Ave. I've got all the trophies. I got. How many years did you play on the dynamites? Two. That's a long. That's long enough. That's all it take, man. That's long enough. We went undefeated, though. Uh, before we go, um, I was trying to pull up a picture. I want to see if we got it, and I'll, this is how we want to end it because this this is a full circle moment on many levels. Um, but when you hear these stories about these men who came up together, you don't even know that they. It was just you know all intertwined like this. I want to take you back to nineteen. It's twenty twenty two. I'm going to take you back to 1989, where you see these two guys right here. That's Craig. That's how long we've been doing it. Craig. Craig. That's Craig. Craig. That's them then. This is them now. Beautiful. Look how God work. (laughs) That's Jerry Curl Cube right there. (laughs) You remember this day, Cube? That's just us on tour backstage, just doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we definitely backstage because I see the tour passes on us. I remember that shirt you used to rock. What was them shirts Van again? Uh, what would we call it? The Homeboy? Was it Homeboy? The, the Homeboy shirts, but that's, homeboy the, that's, that's, that's a different that's, one. That's a different brand, though. Yeah. Yeah, man. Rocking that Dookie Rope. Yes, sir. What you see, Short, when you look at this picture? Oh, man, I just, I, I just remember... Um, I always remember that that guy right there was very enthusiastic about what he was doing. And when I, it, the movie brought back so many memories to me because his character in the movie, him, was mad as hell when when the shit wasn't going right. And I remember him getting like like just being like, man, you gonna give me mine? Like he was never he was never like a pushover. So when the movie tell the story about Ice Cube going solo, I was there. Like his first solo album, we went on tour together. We went on the NWA tour. But then when he left NWA, we went on tour together. And I'm like, I just remember that transition of just seeing him stand up for his and then becoming who he was. So I, I, I look at that and I remember that guy was not taking no shit. I remember that. Well, short, he was just uh, one of the coolest dudes I, I met, you know, in the game. Um, real confident about himself. Um, I actually thought he was a, a pimp for real, you know, when I heard... <laughs> Born the Mac, and and just how nonchalant he was, you know, he had these little dance. Now, like we go on the road, everybody got their dancers back then, mm-hmm. and and nobody wanted anybody to mess with their dancers. They better not talk to them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, That's girl, what they was telling them. You know, yeah, yeah. and um, everybody was like that. You know, so um, 
we just expected everybody to be like that. But sure, was like, I don't give a fuck, man. I don't care about the girls, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> well, it's, I'm here it's, to get my money. It's bad so rules. If you like them, just, they like you. He just, uh, not that he didn't care about them. He didn't care that if we talk, what they did. You know, it was like, yo, as long as they ass is on stage dancing, you know what I'm saying, doing their thing, I don't care. And I just love that attitude, you know. And I was like, uh, I gravitated towards Short. And uh, always wanted to kind of see what he was up to. And we just developed a friendship, um, you know, over the years that is probably the tightest and the longest uh, friendship besides, you know, my, my day ones, you know, like Dre or somebody. But, yeah, yeah, one of my longest running friendships in hip hop, you know, without without no bullshit in between, you yeah, know. Man. Yeah, yeah. And that's hard to maintain in hip hop. It can be at least. Um, hey, gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank, thank you, you, man. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Cass. thank you, man. Thank you for your your vision because the success this this project Mount this Mount Westmore project um, is already successful and it hasn't even been released yet, right? And so that right now is a blueprint that folks will be able to follow to continue their success. So you are consistently giving back in the midst of your success. Your success is our success. You know, that's why she and I decided we wanted to fly out here and do this one. Let us handle this one. Yeah, we appreciate y'all flying way out here to do this. For sure. Absolutely. absolutely. We know you don't do this for everybody, so thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Can I go on tour with y'all? Come on with it. All right. Come on, let's go. Come on with it. Y'all need a host. (laughs) You're going to have fun, man. Okay, Heather come too. Give it up for two short, y'all. Make some noise. Give it up for my cousin E40. Stand up for him, man, and give it up for Ice Cube. Give it up for Heather B. I go by the name of Sway. This is Sirius XM Pandora Playback. And give yourselves a round of applause. And each and every one of you are citizens. A Sway in the morning. Hey, all right.